the Troy before Christ was more, I would guess, more conniving and vindictive. Because at one point, I even sold um, marijuana. But it's more doing things of that nature and just living in another world. But the Troy after Christ was more caring about people, more understanding, and being in the military allowed me the opportunity to be around different people that didn't walk like me, talk like me. So I got diversing that aspect of things, accepting people for who they are. And then from that point, learning how to present the gospel. So in Christ, it was more of completeness. As long as I know he is in the midst of those trials and he's walking with me through it, I can, can go through anything. And that's what allowed me to make it through uh, the military. My full name again is Troy Lamar Singleton. I came to know the Lord. I grew up in church, uh, but wasn't in the church. I knew the Father's Prayer. I would pray before I go to bed, everything of that nature that believers do, but I just did something was missing. Um, as years passed, I came into the military in 94, went to chapel. My wife was always a believer. At that time, she was my girlfriend. And at the base of training, we got married before going to my first duty station. When we got there at Fort Riley, she quickly found a church and asked me if I wanted to go. And I was like, nope, don't want to go. And for a couple of weeks, she kept asking me week after week and I said no every time. And then she stopped and she would just get up Sundays and go to church. And one Sunday, just out of the blue, I got up, started getting dressed and went with her. And she was like, where you going? I said, I'm going with you. And I've been going ever since. And while I was in church, I wasn't understanding what the pastor was saying. It was weird because it wasn't my first time in church, but it just was the first time that I was actually seeking uh, God's face. So I wanted to understand him. Like if I'm going to serve him, I need to know who he is, who he is in my life, not only for my understanding, but to explain to anyone who asked me um, why I believe. And from there, we started going to us and hey, I don't understand. Let's go to Sunday school. She was like, looked at me in front and was like, okay. It's like kind of still not understand. Let's go to Bible study. And she again did a double take and started getting understanding and then I uh, went up to be asked to be baptized in December 17th of that year I uh, was I want to say it was 94 um, I was baptized so I consider that my birthday as well as my physical birthday as my spiritual birthday that's cool so and during that period of time did I've you just feel been like, on fire since um, that's cool so during that period of time did you feel like um, there was something stirring in your heart that something wasn't wrong, that Jesus was calling you to something greater or, or inviting you into something better in your life. Um, like what was, what was it that you were wanting to know more about or, or like what changed in your life that, that caused you to start pursuing the Lord? Before I came in the military and just quick story on that. I hang around a lot of bad people. I was, I mean, I was growing up, I was so bad. My dad's friend would call me trouble. So it was trouble. I kind of was there. So most of my friends were selling drugs, into violence, and just doing a lot of bad activities. Those that did the bigger uh, crimes, of course, they got caught, went to prison, uh, stuff of that nature. And then being away from them, that's when God kind of got my attention. It, I, I could always tell when I was there that something was missing it that was uh, I was out of place. But when I got away, came to the military, I, I was no longer there. I could focus more. I could hear more because I wasn't around those same people. And by that time, I had left, I had left Fort Knox and was at Fort Moore, Fort Benning at the time for the first time station here. And one night I was just, my wife and I was laying in bed and felt the call in the ministry. And I set up and I was like, I I feel God is calling me to ministry. And my wife kind of like, 
shrug, like, or whatever. And then I just laid back down and went back to sleep. <laughs> and didn't answer it. And I ran for two years. So since I was running, I was like, okay, you ain't going to answer. So he says he puts me on orders for Korea. So I ended up in Korea and I tried everything to get out of Korea. And I, that's when I read the um, serenity prayer for the first time. When I read that, when I was like, okay, okay, God, that this is, the, I'm not getting out of these orders. And so I went and came back. And a couple months after I came back, I went up to church and accepted my calling to the ministry. I said, well, preaching, teaching, I'll just teach Sunday school. I'll just teach. So that's what I was doing when I denied the calling. And then he sent me to Korea. I was like, I'm going to answer because I didn't want to go see what he was going to send me next if I disobeyed. So I obeyed. And the funny thing with that story is my wife's pastor in South Carolina told her, you're going to marry a preacher. And she ended up marrying me, who was the total opposite <laughs> of a preacher. And it came true. He was right. And so this call into ministry, this this came after your baptism? Yes. Okay. Um, as you started walking in obedience to that call into ministry, into ministry, uh, what challenges or struggles or or oppositions maybe did you run into as you as you started to walk in obedience to that or or say yes to that call? The challenges were for me was how to put God's word into action, like meaning. How are you walking God's word? How do you live what you preach? How do you live what you teach? That was one of the the hardest things. I still had some of the same friends. I wouldn't ride with them anywhere or get in a car with them to go into place. But we would still communicate when I would go visit home. I just wasn't going to same places I would go. And of course, they would ask me what changed and I, I would tell them and they would talk about it, but it wasn't, I didn't know how to witness to them how to connect those dots. I knew the world they lived in. I knew the world I was living in, but I needed to know the communications needed to effectively present the gospel um, to them. So I wrestled more with that than anything. Like they wouldn't, they knew something was different. They knew I was different. They knew I wasn't thinking I was better than them, but just how to communicate with them now with them still doing some of the same things and me doing totally different than what I used to do, how to do that. That was the, the biggest challenge. Hmm. Yeah. And so as, as you started walking in obedience to both this call into ministry and struggling with this, how do, how do I live what um, I'm preaching? Some of them um, would. What happened? If I was back, um, some of them would, if I was back home and I was preaching in South Carolina, they would, they would come and to the services and they were like, oh, okay, that, that, that was good. That was, <laughs> so they knew it was a change within me and what it caused some thinking on their part as to how they were living and what they were doing because they see that I've changed and stuff of that nature and trying to get them to kind of do the same thing, but without kind of chasing them away, being careful in my words, but at the same time still presenting the gospel to them in bits and pieces to get them to kind of hear what I was coming from. Not only that, but trusting the Holy Spirit to kind of feed them that way through milk if they grasp this, then they'll come back or call to ask me clarification questions on certain things. And so that's how that time went. Okay. Would you say that obedience in this area costs you anything? It, it really didn't cause, cause me anything. It caused them more because during that process, I lost a couple of friends um, to violence, gun violence that died before they were fully invested in Christ. That that would be the regret uh, with one of my close friends. Um, that's all he was. He 
he wasn't doing drugs then. He, I mean, he wasn't selling drugs when I was there. He started doing it after I came in the military. And when I would go home, I would see him. And we would talk. And before he could come to sanctification, he ended up getting, um, getting killed. So just thinking like, Lord, did I, should I, should I have talked to him more? Should I have used different words? Stuff of that nature to try to um, try to try to reach him. What have you learned through this process? Kind of the same thing um, with like with Pastor Jeff when Black Hawk Down Mogadishu when God allowed him to survive. Then you use those opportunities to present it more, more. I wouldn't say more forcefully, but to put it out front instead of lead with it, instead of have it come in the middle or the end of a conversation. Kind of lead with that to cause them to think if they shy away, they, they presented the gospel, whether they want to hear it um, or not, but didn't want to have it like on my conscience anymore of thinking that I, I should have did more getting that question out of the way and present it to them more uh, to get them to come to know him, have more interest in him to shift from doing the things they're doing uh, they're doing something else. Would you say Jesus responded to the maybe the guilt that you were experiencing or or struggling with over not sharing as much with your friend as you had thought you maybe should have or or could have? I think Christ showed me better ways to facilitate it, meaning equipping me with other tools needed. So okay. You need some work on this um, or that to be able to make it plain that they can understand. Like, yeah, they see, they know who you are and that you're different, but how to communicate with them to bridge that gap, to cause them to have a better understanding of where I'm coming from and just making it as, as plain as possible and being able to use some of the examples in my life to help to share with them, to cause them to think about what they're doing, because I know what they're going through. They can say two or three words. I can kind of know their background. So being able to bridge that gap with scripture or with stories related to Christ to cause them to reconsider uh, the path that they're on, um, to get that uh, to where it's more acceptable to them than anything. How would you say your life is different now that you've walked in obedience, uh, specifically into this call into ministry? <laughs> Our life is way different <laughs> than that. I mean, if, even if I forget when I go home, I, I'll see people, I'll see friends that um, have some of them that have moved on from it, but it, it they bring back memories of those days. But it brings up memories like, man, I came a long way. And for the people at like, to say that they don't have a clue who that person is. There's no remnant of that person as residue within me that they will connect the dots between the Troy of that that time, that part, that chapter in my life till till now. And it it's uh I, I I just thank God daily for it and about it. And my wife was a major part of making that happen because she knew me doing that. And the thing with her is she was um, smart, top 10% of her class, went off to school, um, educated, and then she was dating me. And she was like, what are you doing with him? Like, totally two different spectrum but she was that person um that bridged that gap and i asked her later like why did you why did you stuck me through all of that and she just said she saw something in me that 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 what i was doing wasn't who i was and mind you she was going to church and i would probably pop in every now and then but she was active in her church and she dating this guy that just just out there but and i wanted to during that time period but i just kept doing what i was doing but she said she saw something 
um, in me that I didn't really see in myself that the person I was trying to be wasn't a person to know who I was. Can you talk to me about the Troy before Christ and the Troy after Christ, or maybe even specifically this this call into ministry, the Troy before this call into ministry and the Troy after, and what what was it about Jesus that um, that helped bridge that gap between those two? What from what it sounds like, very different Troys. The Troy before Christ was more, I would guess, more conniving and vindictive and. Because at one point, I even sold uh, marijuana, uh, small scale, but it's more doing things of that nature and just living in another world. But Detroit, after Christ, was more caring about people, more understanding, and being in the military allowed me the opportunity to be around different people. They didn't walk like me, talk like me. So I got diversing that aspect of things, accepting people for who they are. And then from that point, learning how to present the gospel. So in Christ, it was more of completeness. When I was without him, it was like something was missing. I didn't know what it was, couldn't put my finger on it. We just knew it was something more to life. And that person before Troy was had limitations. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. But with Christ, told the opposite. Just feel I can do anything that he would um, allow me to do. The person before was more stressful. The person after him was is not as stressful. Um, just being patient with what God would have him be, although that's not a word that no one likes <laughs> to be. It's patient, especially when you're going through trials. But as long as I know he is in the midst of those trials and he's walking with me through it, I can could go through anything, and that's what allowed me to make it through uh, the military. Last question as we wrap up: Who is Jesus to you? Jesus is everything. He's my teacher. He's my the person that I can consult when times are hard. He's uh, someone that I can ask questions when I don't understand. He's someone that's a God and he's my savior. He's and because of him that things that I would have we would have to do that we don't have to do because of him. And from the example that he lived, the adversities that he faced and overcome lets me know that I can do it as well. Because he said greater things that he did that we would do. So I just trust in that and the assurance of that just gives us uh, the comfort to give me the comfort to know that I can be and do anything uh, because of him. Hmm. Troy, thanks for sharing your story. You're welcome.